So some pretty massive updates for Throne and Liberty today. The global release of the game has been pushed back into 2024, but it's not the delay itself that's the big news. It's the reason, which is they are overhauling the game's combat, the leveling, progression systems, and more. This information came via NCSoft's second quarter 2023 earnings call that beyond financial reporting included a Q&A with investors that resulted in them revealing a lot of these details. So in the opening minutes, NCSoft's CFO said, Said that after receiving feedback from the June closed beta test in Korea, they promptly engaged in content improvements for Throne and Liberty, which actively reflected the feedback received to ensure we can present our users with a gameplay experience fitting for a large scale PC game. He went on to say that to ensure we created an optimized global service environment for Throne and Liberty, we are preparing to host a user test with Amazon Games. User test, of course, referring to the closed beta test that they have in the works. Now, after some general general discussion of the overall financials of the company, they moved into the Q&A and this is where the good stuff, the good information and details came through. Now in terms of the delay, as you might recall, initially Throne and Liberty was slated to launch sometime in the first half of 2023. That was then pushed back to October and now as mentioned, it's been delayed even further into 2024. However, tentatively, they are still planning to release in Korea in the fourth quarter, specifically in December, but the global release, yes, that is pushed back into next year. So why the separate releases? Well, apparently NCSoft is hoping that the Korean release of Throne and Liberty is going to build up enough hype for the global version to get people really excited. So what they specifically said was for the domestic launch, the reason why we're looking at the fourth quarter would be that during the CBT we conducted, there were various issues that we were able to identify. And I think that we have been able to fully incorporate and have completed the overall up updates that are required. Based upon that and the feedback, we do feel comfortable with a domestic launch within the year. Further adding that with the buzz created from that Korean release of the game, they think that this will quote, create a more solid support base of fandom surrounding the game for the global release. Now, <laughs> the reason I chuckled at the start of this block of quotes here is because if you were present during that closed beta test in June and saw all of the feedback that came out, you might have seen uh, videos, the coverage, Twitch streams, maybe you saw my videos, you will know that what they're hoping for seems like a bit of a miracle because yes, feedback was predominantly negative. There were actually some a good chunk of good things about the game that people were excited about, but the issue was the core of the game, the combat, and things around the progression systems, how grindy it was, the autoplay, astral hunting, the off offline play and a lot of the stuff around monetization, enough of the core vitally important elements of the game people were not too happy with and the feedback generally across the board, both in the Korean market and then Westerners who played it and reported on it, it was pretty darn negative. But apparently they seem confident enough right now that the changes required and the changes that they've already made as well as the ones that are still in the pipeline yet to come are gonna be good enough to do the trick to launch in Korea in December and that launch to build enough hype to get people excited for the Western release. Now, after this, they were asked directly by investors for further specifics on the timing for both the global closed beta test as well as a 2024 release window. However, NCSoft replied by saying that any further information about this version of the game is actually gonna be coming directly from Amazon. As of today, no such update has come through. So we are still gonna have to wait. Unfortunately, yes, it seems like unless you use a VPN to check out that Korean version in December, you will not be playing Throne in Liberty this year. Fortunately though, there's another MMO you could play like the sponsor of today's video, Tower of Fantasy. Tower of Fantasy is a free to play open world MMO where players can team up to fight bosses, discover interesting simulacrums, and unlock unique relic equipment to take into battle. The game features an action combat system with the assortment of attack types, combos, and the ability to juggle three unique weapons, each with their own swap abilities for big damage. There's a large open world with all the expected activities, main and side story quests, lots of exploration. You'll clear camps full of enemies, gather resources, participate in events, and even fight giant world bosses. There are dungeons called ruins where you'll be fighting through rooms of enemies, doing a bit of traversal, collecting relics, and defeating bosses, of course. There's tons of gear, weapons, and characters for you to collect, and it's got a super detailed character creator with loads of customization options. The game is currently celebrating having recently released on the PlayStation consoles, now available for both the PS4 and PS5, letting a whole new segment of gamers experience the game's free-flowing combat, weapon swap system, world exploration, and its story for the very first 
first time. So if you're interested in checking out Tower of Fantasy on PlayStation, go ahead and use the link in the description below. All right, now let's go ahead and dive into the specifics of the discussion around the gameplay, combat, and system changes that they have made and are planning to make to Throne and Liberty. So the direct question that they were asked was after the domestic test and they gathered that feedback, what were the updates they made to improve the game? The, this particular uh, investor was asking for very specific pointed responses. The reply was, if you look at the areas in which people believe we could do a bit better, I believe one was related to the overall growth experience in the initial stage of the game. When they say growth experience, I'm pretty confident that they're talking about the leveling and progression systems because that was the major point one of the major points of critique how grindy it was how insanely grindy it was especially after level 20 then the quote goes on to say and the second was related to the combat system and the need to make some improvements in that area <laughs> this is absolutely the case that was probably one of the biggest points of contention how rooted the combat was and it's not that there were attacks that had you stand still because a lot of rpgs a lot of action games a lot of mmos have attacks that you requ are required to stand still but it was that there was basically almost no movement in the game with the exception of a handful of skills. The entirety of combat was very static and may maybe not as big of a deal for casters and rangers. This was very clearly, even from just that one test that people participated in, was a massive issue for melee characters. For anyone playing a melee class, using a melee weapon would be at a distinct disadvantage to anyone who was ranged because melee characters could not do anything while moving. They couldn't even auto attack while moving and only had but a handful of skills that actually had any movement to them. As a result, he just wasn't, you all anyone a, a, ever had to do to avoid taking damage from a melee character was just walk away. Like that's literally all it took. You just walk away, you'll be out of range of their melee attacks, piece of cake, no problem. So it is for that reason that people were saying, boy, this combat just does not feel good. And even making the simple change of allowing moving while attacking, and it doesn't have to be for every ability. You can certainly create this system where hard hitting abilities, abilities with big cast time, channeled abilities, there can be abilities that root you in place, but that should be balanced with other abilities that also allow you to move or abilities that have movement to them. And and they are going to be making that change. They went on to say, as a result of that, the improvements that we have incorporated can be divided into two areas. One is that the overall gameplay we have made more dynamic. What we've been able to do is ensure that characters can now move and attack at the same time. And also we have tried to improve the overall responsive time so that gameplay feels more dynamic. Curious here if he's referring to things like input latency or just response time. I think another big point of contention from what I saw and from the early feedback that I watched was character like turning felt a little awkward and clunky clunky the way your character moved around I uh, had like a sort of sluggishness to it so I'm hoping maybe when they're talking about the response time they could be referring to that to the character movement positioning facing your targets turn radius things like that and then going on here they said that the second thing they're working on is in terms of the overall progression and how interesting or entertaining it is we have eliminated a lot of the simple and repetitive content required for progression and at the same time we have also accelerated the overall speed at which characters can level up and this was another one of the major complaints was be after those like first 20 or so levels the game clearly became incredibly grindy and what the community was assuming at that point was because the game featured astral hunting or an auto combat system the developers were designing the progression they were designing the leveling experience around the idea the game can just play itself so theoretically you could have the game running 24 7 your character grinding even when you're not here getting experience gathering gold resources items things like that and they were designing the progression the scaling the timing it takes to start from scratch and go reach to max level or whatever they were designing that with the auto hunting in mind. So I don't know, they did not actually directly address whether or not they're gonna be changing, removing, or making adjustments to the auto hunt system. But at the very least, they have addressed and said that they have sped up the leveling process and they have also reduced a lot of the simple and repetitive content required for that progression. And those are two pretty massive improvements that I'm excited to hear that they are actually addressing and that they're evidently addressing quickly enough that they feel like they're ready to release the Korean version of the game in 
just a few no, months from now in December. They then touched on the fact that with Throne and Liberty, that they are trying to branch out and reach a much wider audience in terms of demographics, in terms of location in the world, age, play preferences, the games people enjoy. They're trying to branch out compared to kind of the existing fan base of NCSoft games. And for that reason, they're putting a lot of thought and work into how they address the feedback they're receiving and how they're going to try to appeal to this uh, new grouping of players. And they said here that this is a collaboration that continues with our partner, Amazon Games. And as a result, we have incorporated a lot of improvements based on the feedback that they have received. So just to recap, the combat is getting big overhauls. They're going to allow moving and attacking, normal attacks, but also casting of abilities. And they're also making improvements to the progression systems. They've sped up leveling. They're removing a lot of that repetitive content. Not super granular specifics, but also keep in mind, this was a financial reporting call. This was them responding to questions from investors. The investors primarily care about, hey, how are you going to make it so that this game is successful, that it appeals to people, and that those people play and spend money? And these were the kind of responses that they got as a result. Now, there was some other news since our last reporting of uh, updates about this game. And I actually want to touch on when we might expect that global beta. Now, according to NH Investment and Securities, who, mind you, this is a company that provides financial services and forecasting for companies in South Korea, this same company was also on that quarterly investment call that we were just talking about. According to them, Throne and Liberty's global beta is going to be scheduled to begin sometime very soon. In an article that was posted just last month discussing NCSoft's financials and investment potential, a representative from the company said, Throne and Liberty is scheduled to conduct a global test in August through September, and the key is whether the complaints mentioned during the domestic test can be corrected. Keep in mind, this is a company that basically gives investment guidelines for people judging how well or not they expect an individual company to do based on their existing and projected financials. So the reason for them even discussing a beta test for the game is because the feedback that results from such tests could result in uh, affecting the company's value. In fact, after the Korean closed beta test that happened back in June, NCSoft financials did take a hit with a lowering of their earnings estimates as a direct result of the poor reception that the game received. So clearly this is something that they're in the loop with and they have some general idea about. Also, there's the fact that Amazon opened up registration for the global beta back in early June. So it's not too unreasonable to think that now, two months later, we might be getting close to those tests beginning. However, as just covered, this recently announced delay and the changes that they're making to the game mean that there is a decent chance, I would assume anyways, that the, the original timeline for this testing, for the global test, that's probably been impacted. Although they are projecting testing to start within the next couple months, it may have very well not be until later in the year or even early in 2024 that we actually get to test out the global version of Throne and Liberty. Now, in other news, one other thing I wanted to touch on was German gaming site GameReactor.de not too long ago posted a 24-minute video of Throne and Liberty console gameplay because yes, as a reminder, the game is coming to both PlayStation and Xbox consoles as well as launching on the PC. Now, the footage is of the game running on an Xbox Series S, and it actually just showcases the introductory experience to the game. They go through character creation, they do the initial tutorial, which basically runs through movement with sprinting, jumping, morphing, and the grapple hook, as well as combats with like the basic attacks, skills, and the game's parry system. In this, we also get a look at the world map and all of the various zones, the ones that are contested for PvP and otherwise. We got to see the console UI with a look at the menu, the inventory system, and overall, I actually think this looks pretty good uh, at the very least while the character is just playing normally I like how a lot of the stuff has consolidated into the corners not taking up the center or the middle of the screen and also keep in mind that the PC version of Throne and Liberty is going to have controller support and we presume if you're playing on a controller you're going to get this controller or console focused UI as well they explored the game's first town talking with NPCs and vendors walking around checking out their inventory and then went on to fight some large tree end like monsters and I just have to say watching through through this 24 minutes of gameplay once again just makes me hope that they can actually do it that they can do the impossible and go from having that closed beta test two months ago with overwhelmingly negative reception and actually turn things around because man if they can improve the combat if they can make the game feel better to play if they can make sure it's not overly grindy or aggressively monetized there is a lot about this game that looks really good like i i covered this in my last video but i think it bears repeating for starters the visuals and environments are really slick looking like check out any of stepperoo's coverage of this game he's got like 10 or something videos on his channel in 2k 60 fps 
with the game running on maximum settings. It looks fantastic, dude. Great visual fidelity and clarity, the lighting, the environmental and particle effects, the character and attack animations. Across the board, Throne and Liberty is just a gorgeous looking MMO. Then there's this massive open world, 100% seamless, no loading screens. I know you hear this a thousand times in like so many games, but this world looks freaking huge. Not only huge in terms of like the, the width of it, the play space, but also the verticality. I've seen footage of players like scaling up this massive tower using their grapple hook and then jumping off, turning into a bird and, and landing on this huge whale flying through the sky. Whales flying doesn't make sense, whatever. It's a fantasy world. Just the scale, the size of this thing. It looks so good. It looks so huge and really immersive, like a really immersive play space. Just watching people's videos of running around the environment, that alone has been enough to entice me to want to try the game in spite of everything else. And then along with this open world, they've got that weather and, and time of day effect. So the weather's going to change. The time of day is going to change. This is going to affect the monsters, bosses in the in open world, the environment by actually changing the environment based on the weather. This can also have an impact on your spells like wind can increase the projectile speed of your projectiles. Just cool, cool systems. They got these huge multi-layered open world dungeons that are not instants. You're going to see other people in them. It's going to have many levels, a lot of that verticality that this game really touts and, and clearly seems to deliver on. We did see the, that one footage, that clip of these ancient ruins and the camera just goes down further and further, deeper and deeper going through, seeing people all over the place. There's even going to be PVP in these areas. Speaking of which, if you like PVP, the game's going to have a lot of it. A lot of the open world will have PVP with regions periodically switching from contested to not contested. There are going to be guild fights over world bosses, a lot of world events, but not just your basic open world MMO world events, world events that are actually competitive, that have players competing against each other to either collect the most objective, collect the most materials of something, kill the most NPCs, or fight other players within a certain time frame. And then depending on how well you do this uh, compared to other people, you're going to receive better rewards. Some really, really cool features. A lot of little small stuff too um, that I touched on in the last video, like these little dust devils that can appear in the desert. You walk into them, they shoot you up in the air, or the fact that when it rains, it actually fills up bodies of water, increasing the level of the water, like going from low tide to high tide, but in a pond. Just some really, really cool and interesting stuff. Really, really cool and interesting systems. And over these past couple of months, since the last video, the more I check up on this game, the more videos that I watch of people playing Throne in Liberty from that June closed beta, I get more and more bummed knowing just how bad the reception was because of those major elements. And those were a big deal. But if they can address that, if they can fix the combat, if they can make it feel better, if they can not make it too grindy, if they could get rid of the pay to win and the mobile like elements, that's a, that is a lot of ifs, bro. <laughs> but, but if they can do it, man, so much about Throne and Liberty looks really sick and I really hope they can. And hey, you know what? As far as they said, well, at least when talking to their investors, this is stuff that they are addressing. They have delayed the game for that reason, a few months in Korea and until next year for that global release. And they have directly stated planned adjustments to a lot of these major pain points that were brought up in that beta test. Although one glaring omission was the lack of discussion about game games monetization, although being an investor call, they don't want to hear anything about cutting back on monetization, clearly. And to put it bluntly, Throne in Liberty, even in the closed beta, had some of the really bad elements of mobile game microtransactions on display with paid only daily quests that grant massively better rewards than the unpaid versions. You got to spend money to get the better daily. You got to spend money for better daily quests. Oh boy, what a, yeah, what an opportunity. Also the fact that the offline autoplay, which basically just accounts to free experience and gold for any players who pay for it. That that comes only via a monthly subscription. There is a running the game autoplay, but if you want to shut your PC down and just have the game play itself on their servers, you have to pay for that. And then just a bunch of other pay to win and pay for convenience features that again, were already in the game just in a beta test. Whole lot of ifs, but yes. If they can fix this stuff, dude, there's, there is a lot of really cool stuff. I know this is like peak levels of copium. <laughs> At the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? If this thing comes out and they don't really address the things, if the game doesn't feel better, if combat doesn't actually, if those combat changes aren't actually enough to make it feel better to play and all of the other issues, well then too bad. I'll just play anything else, right? There's, there's a lot of games to play, but I hope they can fix it, dude. I really do because yes, as I, I went through that list again, so much about Throne and Liberty sounds really cool. And it looks, it looks good, dude. It just looks so good and it's huge, open, love the verticality. I want them to fix this game. I'm not holding my breath on it. I'm not counting on it, but I hope they can do it. We will see what happens. I'll keep you guys up to date. Thank you for watching today's video. I'll see you next time.